So both AMD and Nvidia are in a position right now where they don't really need to try when it comes to making a good GPU, right? The GPU market is so easy for them at the moment, pretty much anything will sell. Uh, this is a great example of that. This is the new RTX 3050 from Nvidia. It is the cheapest RTX 30 series card in their lineup yet. And you know what, at $250, if you can actually buy it at that price, it's actually not too bad of a GPU considering what your other options are, which is pretty much nothing. It can power 1080p gaming pretty confidently and it seems like a good pairing with a 144Hz monitor, but it is very cut down from the other RTX 30 series GPUs. In fact, it's packing almost 30% less CUDA cores than the RTX 3060 and has a much weaker memory spec as well. All that while only being $80 or 24% cheaper on paper, but hopefully it is a lot cheaper in reality since you can't actually buy the 3060 at its $330 MSRP. Total board power for the 3050 lands us at 130 watts, so pretty lightweight GPU, powering this thing will be no problem, and the card that we have here uses a single 8-pin power connector. This is also the the first 50 class GPU from Nvidia to pack the RTX naming with RT cores and tensor cores for things like ray tracing and DLSS. Now whether that's actually worth considering we'll come back to in a moment but something that I do really want to make clear before we jump into the side by side comparisons is that this doesn't feel like a 50 class GPU at all. I mean when you take a look at the GTX 1650 and the GTX 1650 Super those GPUs launched at $150 and you could actually buy them at those prices. This on the other hand is more comparable to a GTX 1660 Super, which, you know, starting at $250. And again, that represents best case. We all know that that is more realistically going to be $300 to $350 at least. And at that point, you're comparing it to an RTX 2060. But let's start off here in an ideal world. If you can actually buy the RTX 3050 for $250 US dollars, what does that look like in terms of price to performance? Well, here in Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p, we have the GTX 1060 on the left, the 1660 Super in the middle, and then the RTX 3050. All of these GPUs have MSRPs right around $250. So as we can see, there is a big jump in performance between the 1060 and the 1660 Super. We go from barely being able to manage 60 FPS here at high settings to driving that pretty comfortably. In the end, there's about a 35% performance uplift between those two GPUs. Then we upgrade to the 3050, and it's only a few percent faster at best. Keep in mind, the 1660 Super is over two years old now. In GTA 5, we see pretty much the same thing. Big difference between the 1060 and the 1660 in terms of what performance you're getting at the $250 mark. And yes, those GPUs actually sold for $250 pretty consistently. The 3050 and the 1660 Super though, don't look too different. Unfortunately now though, you can't actually buy the 1660 Super for $250. $50, so with that in mind, the RTX 3050 is a little bit more tolerable. And let me be totally clear, this is horrible progress from Nvidia. They could do a lot better than this, knowing how powerful the Ampere architecture actually is. But from a consumer's perspective, you don't have many other options at this price. Now, if the RTX 3050 actually ends up selling north of $300, and in that case should be compared to something like the 2060, you can see how that comparison pans out. In fact, if you bought an RTX 2060 when it launched three years ago, which wasn't a super strong card by any means, you'd still be beating what is possible to buy today in terms of performance at the same price. So let's just all take that in for a second. I think we'd all agree that the RTX 3050 will realistically sell for about $300 to $350 plus, which then prices it the same as the three-year-old RTX 2060. If that's the case, as you can see here, Nvidia's GPUs have actually gotten slower. We can also see just how cut down the 3050 is compared to the 3060. On average, the 3050 is around 25% slower here in Doom Eternal. Then in Witcher 3, it's even worse. Here, the 3050 is 30% slower on average. Sure, it can still drive a capable 1080p gaming experience with high quality settings, but man, that is a tough pill to swallow. Another GPU that we should probably throw into the mix is AMD's RX 6600. This is a GPU that's currently listed for about $480 on newer which is pretty appalling, but depending on what 
RTX 3050 pricing comes out to, this is a GPU that you might want to consider as well. Performance is a noticeable jump over the RTX 3050, so the recommendation here as usual is to weigh up how much the price difference is in your particular region versus the performance difference as well. Now, if it makes it a little bit easier, if the 3050 actually comes in at under $300, it's a GPU that will get the job done if you're on a tighter budget, if you play easier to run games, and of course, if you have no other options like a good secondhand GPU from a friend. For competitive esports style games that are a lot easier to run, it does have acceptable performance. So out of curiosity, I paired it with the Intel i3-12100F and wanted to see what the experience was like with lower quality settings in games like Apex and Valorant, and yeah, actually not too bad at all. Very smooth experience, which would make for a great pair alongside a 144Hz or even 240Hz monitor. Also, the 8GB of VRAM means that you can pretty much max out textures at 1080p in any game and still get something that looks pretty good. So i3 and 3050, definitely a viable pair for esports style games with low settings. And again, hopefully the pricing of the 3050 lands at something reasonable. Now the 3050, it is an RTX card, which means that it is equipped with ray tracing and DLSS features, but there are a couple of things to note here. Firstly, enabling ray tracing will cost you quite a bit of performance on such a low end card and enabling DLSS at such low resolutions means that your actual rendering resolution is quite low. Now this isn't a problem at high resolutions like 1440p and 4K, but if you're enabling DLSS at 1080p, then the end result will typically be quite a bit soft. So just keep that in mind, uh, no doubt useful features, I would consider it a nice to have kind of feature set on a low end GPU for the right games, but it is a lot more useful at high resolutions and on more powerful hardware. And then a quick look at power, clock speed and temperatures. Uh, the 3050 will run quite fine in pretty much any system out there. It is a really lightweight GPU. Power consumption sits right around 130 watts with the clock speed at about 1830 megahertz. So definitely no point here opting for a beefy triple fan cooler design. I would just recommend picking up the most affordable dual fan cooler design that is available. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the RTX 3050 from Nvidia. As usual, GPUs keep getting slow keep getting more cut down and there is just less reason for Nvidia and AMD for that matter to release GPUs that are actually impressive. Uh, without seeing the pricing online it's just not worth me going back and forth with you guys on what this is worth it against you know Radeon cards 3060 just not worth it without seeing the pricing online so as usual I would recommend making an educated decision based off of the pricing and the other cards in your region. Again at the $250 MSRP if it can actually launch at that price it is an acceptable GPU. I certainly don't want to make anyone feel bad for purchasing it because you don't really have a lot of other options. But otherwise, you know, only being a few percent faster than a GTX 1660 Super at the same MSRP, I think that really speaks for itself. So I will leave it linked down below. We'll be launching tomorrow, so keep an eye out for it. As always, a huge thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.